we are asked to diagonalize the following three by three matrix. The steps to diagonalize an n by n square matrix are as follows. Number one, we determine the eigenvalues of the matrix, which in our case will be lambda sub one through lambda sub three. Number two, we construct the diagonal matrix D using the eigenvalues along the main diagonal. All their entries are zero. Number three, we determine n linearly independent eigenvectors, which in our case will be the vectors P sub one through P sub three. Step four, we construct matrix P using the eigenvectors as the columns. Number five, we determine the inverse of matrix P. And then finally, six, we write matrix A at the given matrix in the form of matrix A equals matrix P times matrix D times the inverse of matrix P. So to begin, let's find the eigenvectors of the given matrix. To do this, we solve the equation, the determinant of the difference of matrix A and the product of lambda and the identity matrix equals zero. Notice the matrix resulting from the difference of matrix A and the product of lambda and the identity matrix gives us the matrix with entries negative one minus lambda, negative 19, negative four, zero, negative two minus lambda, zero, zero, 15, three minus lambda. Next, we find the determinant, set it equal to zero and solve. To find the determinant, we will use the cofactor expansion method. And I'm going to use row two since row two has two zero entries. So notice how the first product and the third product will be zero because the entries are zero and therefore the determinant is equal to the element in row two, column two, times negative one, raised to the power of two plus two, times the determinant of the matrix after deleting the row and column of the entry negative two minus lambda, which would be row two and column two, leaving us with the determinant of the matrix where the entries are negative one minus lambda, negative four, zero, three minus lambda. Next, the fourth power of negative one is equal to positive one. So we're left with negative two minus lambda times this two by two determinant, which is equal to the product of negative one minus lambda and three minus lambda minus four times zero, which just gives us the product of negative one minus lambda and three minus lambda. So notice how we have the determinant we need already factored, set equal to zero, and because the product on the left must be zero, we know that lambda sub one is equal to negative two, lambda sub two is equal to negative one, and lambda sub three is equal to positive three. So now we have the information we need to form the diagonal matrix D, where the entries along the main diagonal, again, are the eigenvalues of negative two, negative one, three, all other entries are zero. And now we need to find the corresponding eigenvectors that will form the columns of matrix P. Let's start with lambda sub one equals negative two, to find the corresponding eigenvectors, we solve the equation, the difference of matrix A and the product of lambda and the identity matrix times vector X equals a zero vector, which I've already set up below. Notice how I substituted negative two for lambda. From here, let's go ahead and write the matrix equation. Let's go ahead and check the coefficient matrix. The first entry is negative one plus two times one, which is positive one. The next two entries don't change. We have negative 19 and negative four. In row two, we have zero, and then the entry in row two, column two, is negative two plus two times one, which is zero, and the last entry in row two is zero. And then checking row three, we have zero, 15, and then three plus two times one, which is equal to five. I also wrote vector x as the vector x one, x two, and the zero vector as the vector is zero, zero. And now to solve, we write the augmented matrix, and write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which you can see I've already done. Notice how there is no pivot in column three, which indicates x three is a free variable. Row one indicates that x one plus seven thirds x three equals zero, or if we solve for x one, we have x one equals negative seven thirds x three. The second row indicates x two plus one third x three equals zero. Solving for x two, we have x two equals negative one third x three, and again, x three is a free variable. We let x three equal x three. To parameterize the solution, let's let x3 equal t, and therefore all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative two are in the form of negative seven thirds t, negative one third t, t, which indicates all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative two are all the scalar multiples of the vector negative seven thirds, negative one third one, not including the zero vector. 
So we can use any eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub one equals negative two for the first column of matrix P. To avoid fractions, let's let T equal three and use the eigenvector negative seven, negative one, three. And again, this gives us the first column of matrix P. And now we need to find an eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub two equals negative one. So we go through the same process, solve by setting up an augmented matrix, and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Notice this time there's no pivot in column one, which indicates x1 is a free variable. Because x1 is a free variable, we have x1 equals x1. The first row indicates x2 equals zero, and the second row indicates x3 equals zero. To parameterize the solution, let's let x1 equal s which means all the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub two equals negative one are all the scalar multiples of the vector one, zero, zero, except the zero vector, so S can't be zero. Let's use the eigenvector one, zero, zero for the eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub two equals negative one, which gives us a second column of matrix P. And now we need to find an eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub three equals three. So we go through the process one more time where we have the original equation, the matrix equation, followed by the augmented matrix, and then the augmented matrix written in reduced row echelon form. Notice we don't have a pivot in column three, which indicates x3 is a free variable. The first row indicates x1 plus x3 equals zero. Solving for x1, we have x1 equals negative x3. The second row indicates x2 equals zero. And again, x3 is a free variable. We have x3 equals x3. Again, let's parameterize the solution by letting r equal x3. All the eigenvectors corresponding to lambda sub three equals three are scalar multiples of the vector negative one, zero, one, excluding the zero vector. Let's use the vector negative one, zero, one as the eigenvector corresponding to lambda sub three equals three, which gives us a third column of matrix P. Notice how we do have three linearly independent eigenvectors it's also important to recognize that this matrix P is not unique, but what is important is that the columns of matrix D and matrix P correspond, meaning if we have the eigenvector of negative two in column one of matrix D, we must have the corresponding eigenvector in column one of matrix P. And if we have the eigenvector of negative one in column two of matrix D, column two must contain the corresponding eigenvector in matrix P, and so on for column three. Now that we have matrix P, the last step is to determine the inverse of matrix P. There are a few ways to find the inverse of a three by three matrix. I'm gonna go ahead and use an augmented matrix where we have matrix P on the left and the three by three identity matrix on the right, and then we perform row operations so that we have a three by three identity matrix on the left, and then on the right we will have the inverse of matrix P. So I've already performed all the row operations. Notice now we have the three by three identity matrix on the left, and on the right, columns four, five, and six form the inverse of matrix P. So now that we have matrix D, matrix P, and the inverse of matrix P, we have all the information we need to diagonalize the given three by three matrix. Again, the given matrix is equal to matrix P times matrix D times the inverse of matrix P, which is the diagonalization of the given matrix. I hope you found this helpful.